Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Easy Conversations podcast, a podcast about having easy conversations. I'm your host, Burkan Dandia. In this week's episode, I sit down with Kimberly Nina Hill. Uh, Kimberly is a relationship coach that works specifically with men, and she also has her own podcast called The uh, Self Confidence Project. Uh, Kimberly and I discuss how men can show up in relationships and the things that men need to focus on. Uh, in this episode, Kimberly and I also get into some details about uh, the dating in the online world, and Kimberly shares some helpful tips that can help men when they set up their profiles. Uh, I really hope you can get a lot out of this episode, and if at the end you can leave a five star review, I would truly appreciate it. All right, Kimberly, thanks for joining the uh, Easy Conversations podcast. I'm uh, super grateful to have you on here and, you know, appreciative that you're taking the time to come on and have this conversation with me today. But before we get started, I just wanted to give you an opportunity to introduce yourself and maybe talk about a little bit about the work you do specifically with men, and then we'll kind of get on with our discussion from there. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you for having me. It's nice to have the tables turned and, and join someone else's show and not always be the one in the hosting seat. So it yeah. um, feels good. Uh, my name is Kimberly. For those that, that may not uh, have connected with me on social media or know who I am, um, I'm from Vancouver, British Columbia, um, and I coach men. And I coach men in the area of dating and relationships, um, of course, around intimate relationships, but when we talk about relationships, it seems to span to every single relationship that we have, including the one with ourselves. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, typically I'm working with men who are single and are wanting to get back into the dating scene, but don't really know where to start. And maybe it's because they don't have the experience. Maybe it's because 2021 is just hectic and crazy, or maybe it's because they were married for 15 years and now mm -hmm. they're dating again. And it's like, wow, this feels different. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> or men that are in relationships already, um, either new ones or even long-term ones that are saying, hey, I really want to give this relationship my absolute best shot. But things aren't feeling right. So help me work through some of the things that are going on here, including you know, asking for what I need and, and improving communication and deepening intimacy and making sure they have time for themselves and lives outside of the relationships too. So when it comes to dating or uh, relationships, and if you're a man or you identify as one, then, then that's the kind of work I do. So, yeah. Awesome. And, and just out of curiosity, like what got you into this field, specifically working with men? Um, you know, obviously like I know a lot of men who would be somewhat intimidated working with the female, right? So yeah. have you experienced that and, and, you know, maybe share some of the things you do that could be different from, from a male's perspective? Totally. I guess two questions there. How did I get into yeah. this? I, I do get asked that a lot. And my story is a little bit, I guess we're all, our stories are unique, yeah. uh, but how I ended up in the coaching field is maybe not what people traditionally think. Of course, I've had relationships and of course I've had relationships that didn't feel right or didn't mm -hmm. work out or where I ended them or someone else ended them. So there's a, that personal motivation to get into the dating relationship space, but why men? Well, before I even started my coaching practice, before I worked with over a hundred men, I was already working with men, but in a very different field. Mm -hmm. So prior to starting this business, I had been living overseas for about a decade across uh, Sydney, Australia. I was living in Singapore for a while. I actually had a, a close to a decade career working in financial derivatives. So I worked, worked for one of the largest inner dealer brokers in the world. And if anyone knows anything about that industry, it is probably 95% male dominated. Mm -hmm. So I have always been surrounded by men when it came to the workplace. Uh, I work with them. I reported to them. I traveled with them. I helped hire them. I helped fire them. Mm -hmm. That's what I did. Like I was a female in a very masculine dominated industry. And did I have any idea that 10 years later I was going to get into coaching? No, I did not. I absolutely did my best to, uh, to climb the corporate ladder like most people do. Mm -hmm. And it was in the last few years of working in that industry that 
one, I noticed that the men opened up to me a lot. Um, I was able to witness the struggle that men had to go through balancing their corporate lives and then their personal lives and Mm -hmm. how those meshed and got messy. And, you know, I know guys were sending money back to their wives that lived in different countries. You know, guys were going out entertaining clients till one or 2 a.m., and their wife's at home with three kids. And like, mm-hmm. it was all in balance. And I just found that I was, the men really opened up to me about their lives. Mm-hmm. And one of the benefits of the firm that I worked at is they actually hired a kind of a coach, symbiotic kind of like coach slash counselor to be made available to the employees. And our CEO in Australia had hired this gentleman. And it was like, you guys want some support, whether it's uh, conflict you're having at work or, or stuff that's going on in your personal lives, take advantage of the fact that we're paying for this coach and you can go see him once a month if you want. And I was mm-hmm. like, yep, heck yeah. I'm like, I'll take free support any day. So mm-hmm. I started speaking to this gentleman for uh, every month that he came in, if I was available, I'd go chat with him. And this probably lasted for maybe six or eight months when I was in Australia. And then I made a big transfer up to Singapore and continued speaking with him for at least another year. Maybe there was a bit of a gap and then at least another year. And it was through getting coaching myself, plus everything that was happening in my personal life that I kind of recognized that I really wanted to support other people. Mm -hmm. And I really enjoyed the support I was getting from this uh, coach. And I just had that kind of moment of clarity or that moment where I realized I like being in that teaching role. I really like supporting people emotionally. I really like helping them solve problems. I really like helping people solve their own problems. Mm -hmm. And it was a little bit like that aha moment, but it, that aha moment took a while to build up. It's not like I have one combo and I was like, oh my God, I want to change my whole life around. It was like, it was a slow buildup. And I made the decision actually to quit my corporate career without another job lined up. In fact, I was in Singapore at the time. I left Singapore. I left the job. I left the friends. I left with my partner. And then shortly after left my partner. And it was like a massive change in my life. So I came back to Vancouver, Canada. And I thought, fuck now what? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I just said that I'm going to go do this. And now I don't know what to do. And so there's a real big period of transition. And then it's led me to where I am now. I got into, you know, coaching school, got qualified. And then guess what? I decided to coach women. <laughs> and so I was like, I'm a girl, I'm a woman. I should just, you know, I know women's issues. I should just focus on that. And very quickly realized that that's amazing. And it brings me a lot of fulfillment, but supporting men made me feel even more fulfilled Mm -hmm. because there are not a lot of females that I know that are advocating for men and are speaking out for men or supporting men's emotional needs as well. And Mm -hmm. I have a lot of girlfriends and I've been guilty of it myself over the years where we're like, things aren't going right in dating or relationships. Who do we blame? we blame the dude we're dating. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Right. And it's interesting because they, you know, more men are the ones that are committing suicide. Uh, Men actually struggle after breakups for longer than women. Mm -hmm. And, you know, men are being put down a lot in society. And so I want to break that mold. I want to be different. I want to support men. I'm good at it. I make good connections with men. The energy is really aligned and I get to do something I love while supporting men and I get to learn a lot along the way. So mm-hmm. I'm trying to give you like the spark notes of like my <laughs> story. Cause you know, it spans over many, many years. Yeah. But here I am today and I really love it. Um, of course I, I, I would coach women too. And, and you know, if it, it's the right fit, there are a lot of the same things I'm coaching men on women can mm-hmm. benefit from as well, like intimacy building and, and conflict reduction and asserting ourselves and and learning boundaries and all of that, but it feels right to do what I do. Um, so here I am, um, your second question, which I am surprised you even remembered here is are, are men like intimidated to work with me? Maybe, Mm -hmm. but I haven't had that. Mm. Um, and I think I do a 
decent job of removing any intimidation factor because there is no judgment in coaching. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've worked with men in their young twenties and men in their mid sixties. Um, and it's really just about that kind of compassionate energy and fit. So I haven't run into that. Although if any of my clients have felt that they've been really good at hiding it. <laughs> so yeah. 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 Well, I think part of it is, and to kind of like transition into the main discussion I wanted to have with mm. you today is, is about vulnerability. Right. And I feel yeah. like a lot of men, uh, myself included at times we struggle with it. Right. And, yeah. and I think that is, um, compounded when, when you're talking to women or, or, you know, especially if you're trying to work with them. And I think that's where I was curious about, you know, it could be intimidating where you're sitting, uh, you know, across the table or, or working with the female and you're mm -hmm. having to talk about your emotions or, oh, yeah. or, or getting deep into some of, some of the things that you struggle with in the dating world. Right. Yeah. A hundred percent. You're right. Like if they can practice doing it with me, that's actually great practice for doing it with the woman that they want to actually be mm -hmm. with and no, it's not easy. Right. Um, but with the right support and the right kind of cajoling and the right environment and that element of making sure it's confidential and safe and that that trust can be built, then it's totally possible. Right. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. For sure. And, and talking about intimacy building. So, you know, I have a lot of guy friends and, and everyone's different. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I get to, it's funny, I get to hear various opinions and perspectives on how uh, these guys want to show up in their relationships. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's that whole, I, I need to be an alpha to, to really mm -hmm. get that uh, control or power in the relationship. And then mm. there's some of the guys who are really starting to come around the idea of, okay, well, I need to be vulnerable and express my emotions. But then that also backfires at times. And then mm. they almost regret taking that approach. But yeah. what are some of the things you uh, tend to coach uh, the men you work with um, in terms of how to build that intimacy? Well, that as well. I mean, I think there's a misconception, right? Men either think they have to be like the asshole or jerk, mm -hmm. or they're like, if I'm not that I'm a nice guy and nice guys finish last. Yeah. Right. Well, here's the truth. Nice guys don't finish last pushovers finish last. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And a lot of nice guys are pushovers because they're right. people pleasers or they value the opinion of others more than they value their own opinion. And Correct. so I do work with a lot of men who would admit or nod their head up and down. If I ask them, are you the caregiver in your relationship? Yeah. Are you the people pleaser? Yeah. Do you often do things you don't want to do just to make the other person happy? Yeah. Oh, do you prescribe to the belief that it is your responsibility to make your partner happy? Uh, yeah. So mm -hmm. what have you done nice for yourself recently? Uh, nothing. Right. So, you know, that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Right. For and sure. so a lot of the coaching and the work I do with men is helping them understand that first and foremost, and secondly, learning how to overcome it. So it's okay to be assertive, mm -hmm. right? It's actually okay to have a, to be in a relationship and your partner not be perfectly happy all the time, right? Because right. it actually doesn't exist, right? We can't yeah. be perfectly happy all the time. So I teach men to not only understand what they need, but to be able to communicate it in a really respectful way. And yes, on this other hand, we also have to know that sometimes when we do make requests or we are being vulnerable, that there is an element of the other person maybe doesn't accept that. Mm -hmm. Or we have to be aware that rejection is a part of life. And that's Correct. something that we can learn and overcome because what you were saying earlier was like these guys that decide to take that vulnerable route and then it like air quote backfires. Well, something's happening there, mm -hmm. right? If they're choosing to be vulnerable with someone and it backfires, either they're sharing too much or the individual is just not the right person for them. Right. And if there's a kind of judgment there, well, of course it's going to backfire because that's just not your person. And mm -hmm. we have to take that risk in life to say, well, I can't hide myself and expect to be seen. But if I choose to be seen, I also run the risk that not everybody is going to like the real me. And Correct. that I'm okay with. 
but that's the hard part is getting to be okay with that part, right? Right, and that's what I try to tell people also is you can only control the way you show up yeah. and, and you can't be responsible for how the other person's showing up. So if you're being vulnerable and it doesn't work out, that is a sign that maybe that, like you said, that person's not right for you. Yeah. Uh, the other piece I'd like to add is, is setting boundaries early on, right? And mm -hmm. I think uh, that's what, I think what you were meaning or trying to say is like with being a pushover, yeah. you also need to be able to set boundaries. And, and if the other person doesn't like your boundaries, again, that's indicative yeah. of their personality or their character. It has nothing to do with you. And we quite mm -hmm. often tend to personalize how other people react to our boundary setting. Yeah, it's so important to have boundaries and to be able to uphold them. Uh, and to uphold them is, is more than just saying what they are once. It's often mm -hmm. reinforcing time and time again. Um, and if the other individual doesn't respect them or pushes back, um, well, sorry, you know, yeah. as long as those are respectable boundaries to have in the first place, then to me, that's a deal breaker, right? Mm -hmm. Someone who time, because that, that means there's no respect. And if there's Correct. no respect, there's no relationship. So yeah, but, but when it comes to boundaries, it's like someone who hasn't really had them or really known how to enforce them may need a little bit of help to figure out how to do that. Uh, because we don't want to, we don't want to live our lives in either extremes too mm -hmm. much or too little, right? We not, need to find where like that healthy balance is. So yeah, oftentimes I, I have a worksheet that I get clients to do, which gets them to kind of self-assess whether they're a little too loose with their boundaries or they're a little too rigid with them and mm -hmm. then what they can really do to kind of settle themselves in the middle. For example, saying yes to everything all the time is too loose of a boundary. And mm -hmm. a lot of men in relationships will do that, right? They'll, they'll drop everything just to make their partner happy. And then when their partner says, I'm not satisfied in the relationship, the men go, what? Yeah. I mean, I've been doing absolutely every goddamn thing you ask. And I've been doing it like, like trying my darn best. What's going on here? And she's like, ah, it's just, I'm not feeling it. And, and that, that's where guys get devastated, right? Mm -hmm. the, the, the healthier kind of approach is to say, yeah, a healthy relationship is based on interdependence, right? Right. You're not codependent. You're not one identity. You're not commingled. You don't do absolutely everything together, right? right? And you're not so independent that you're like avoidant and you're never really relying on each other for anything. The interdependence mm -hmm. is two people come together to share a life together, but they have separate identities, right? And they can also rely on each other and lean on each other for support, but they also know how to self-support and they also have a support network outside of the relationship mm -hmm. yeah yeah and, and and just to finish the whole discussion on boundaries i feel like you know men or, or or people in general i don't think it's specific just to men like set forest boundaries and then when they're kind of crossed you know they kind of get upset and that resentment builds but like you said if you're not reinforcing the boundaries you can't expect the other person to just respect them unless you know you need to lead by example almost if it's your yeah. boundary effective communication right and yeah so like communication is not one conversation often it can be multiple conversations or hey when you did this or when i noticed this i really felt this way and it really hurt my feelings and another person has a chance to be like oh shoot like i didn't i didn't know that that hurt you i'm so sorry okay like yeah, I can own my part in this and I'll modify things, right? We need to be going kind of back and forth all the time. That's why they, people say like relationships are a compromise. Mm -hmm. It's not like I have to give up a big part of my life just to be in this relationship. No, it's constant little bits of compromise all the time, particularly yeah. in our communication. And, and I sure. guess in my humble opinion, compromise can sometimes mean accepting our part in things and yeah. not being so defensive and saying, you know, like, you know what, maybe I misheard you the first time. I'm happy to kind of give it a try this way if it makes you feel better. Or yeah. no, I absolutely cannot do that because that's a hard boundary for me, yeah. whatever it is. Right? Yeah, and I think to your point, communication is really important because even just the word compromise means different things to different people, right? Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people think compromise is giving up on whatever they want, right? They're mm -hmm. consistently uh giving up on their boundaries or what their needs are in the relationship but to your point if you're communicating and you're finding the middle ground in a lot of situations 
then you can kind of build up your emotional bank account yeah. in the relationship. Otherwise, um, what happens, at least what I've seen or experienced myself is it's just, it's resentment, right? Yeah. You're, you're consistently getting angry and upset and you're, you're bottling it up and it, you just continue to resent that person. And it just gets to the point where mm. you, you start keeping score. Yeah. Okay. If we're at the scorekeeping part of the relationship, it's, <laughs> you pretty much have already checked out at that point. Yeah. And yeah. Resentment is a silent killer, right? And because when we resent somebody, it turns into contempt and mm-hmm. we hold our partner in contempt or we look down on them or we roll our eyes at them or we think that we're above them and they're below us. Uh, in fact, that's the number one predictor of, of marital divorce is mm-hmm. contempt. And I think it really stems from uh, resentment. And that stems from not having our needs met, which stems from not being able to communicate them. And if we're still failing there, then it's probably not the right person, right? Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah, for sure. And I think a lot of the things that I see with men specifically is, again, going back to what you said, uh, expressing what their needs are or their mm-hmm. emotions. Um, I think a lot of men are too scared of coming across as like quote unquote weak or by, needy yeah yeah or needy exactly by being vulnerable mm-hmm. and then they just kind of expect their partner to read their mind oh okay. I've heard that so many times they're like yeah. my my partner just doesn't like get me like I, I wish they understood me more and I'm like well do you tell them what you need no okay well so they can't read your mind and mm-hmm. women are very intuitive yeah. But we are not mind readers, even though yeah. we might be able to finish your sentence correctly every yeah. now and then, we really are not mind readers. And if you need something, you need to tell us. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And Likewise. I think it's, yeah. it's, yeah, exactly. And I think it's equally important when it comes to expressing your emotions, right? If yeah. something upset you or something hurt you, you can either pretend like you're fine with it and be mm-hmm. all manly <laughs> Or, yeah. or just express yourself and give the other person an opportunity to repair. Yeah. Um, and, and that's what I see often happens is guys let their egos get in the way. And, and that yeah. just, you know, creates a, a whole different set of issues. Yeah. I think like the key here for sure is like men and women getting more used to saying, I feel this, mm-hmm. I feel unloved right now or I feel like distant from you or I feel sad right now or whatever like just learning to communicate most of the times I think the difficult thing there is that I know a lot of people and I believe this for a long time too and it's still something that I have to like work on in my current relationship is when when our partner is not feeling a positive emotion, when they're feeling any negative emotion, whether it's anger, sadness, depression, anxiety, whatever it is, mm-hmm. we often just want to like fix their feelings. <laughs> like, yeah. ah, I don't feel that way. Like, oh, I hate seeing you hurting. It's more like you hurting makes me uncomfortable and I want to mm-hmm. stop that. So yeah. we need to learn to be okay with our partner's feelings and learn to be able to communicate them and not judge our partners and also let them express and go through what they need to go through. Society has taught us like bad emotion, like shut up or like, you know, don't express it or don't say it. Like only, only celebrate the good times. Don't, uh, don't dwell on the bad ones. Right. And it's like, well, sorry, like we need to just be human and express a wide range of emotions and be able to support our partner through that and not try and solve it or fix it (laughs) for sure yeah and I think that's a a significant thing like at least I've had to learn the hard ways it's you know you kind of get caught in that trap of wanting to fix things meanwhile you're not taking the time to really understand what it is your partner needs maybe they don't need you to fix something they just want you to listen to them beautifully said yeah this is called emotional validation or validating our partner's emotions and I always say like there's often this disconnect where men typically stereotypically are like uh, logical thinkers or problem solvers when they see their like partner upset they want to like fix the problem and fix the feeling yeah whereas women stereotypically are more and they're feminine they're more emotional and they just want to like feel heard Mm because we're also intelligent we're also problem solvers too so what happens is when a, like a woman in the relationship comes to the man with her emotional side and saying like, oh, I'm feeling all of these emotions and he meets her with his intellectual side, mm-hmm. you get this mismatch 
the intellect and, and emotion, like you could see my hands right now, if you're listening, they're like, they can't, they can't connect. Right. Yeah. And so often if the problem is emotional, meet it with emotion. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If the problem is intellectual, meet it with in, in, intellect, like equally there. Right. With, yeah. Yeah. What is it? Is even intellectualism a word? Probably not. <laughs> no, but I, yeah. no, I hear you. I, <laughs> you know I what can, I'm saying? Yeah. I can completely yeah. relate. I'm, yeah. I'm an engineer by background. Yeah. So I, I understand that everything's a, yeah. We, we like to solve every problem. <laughs> right. And so the best way of solving it is by saying like, what do you need for me right yeah. now? Do you just want me to listen or would you like me to help you problem solve? Yeah. I bet if people could learn just that phrase, we would reduce like <laughs> relationship conflict by like 50% because yeah. most of the times conflict, it escalates. I, cause I don't feel heard or like mm -hmm. validated. And so then you get upset because not only are you emotional because of whatever's going on, but then your need in that moment is not being met. And then it just mm -hmm. escalates, turns into an argument or a screaming match or slam doors or whatever. <laughs> yeah, no. And I think, you, uh, you know, like you mentioned, I, I think for us people in general, we get uncomfortable when, when someone's feeling negative emotions, right? It's, yeah. It's the same when you have children that are crying or upset. You mm. just want to fix it rather than understand. Maybe they just wanted to cry and let it out. <laughs> yeah. And, or like as toddlers too, like I would highly recommend, like I, I, I want to have children. I don't at the moment. My sister does. And when I see my little four-year-old nephew upset, instead of being like, Mike and stop crying. I just want to go up to him and say, like, as the coach in me wants to go, mm -hmm. I noticed that you're upset right now. Right validating his emotion what do you what do you what do you think that's from and like what do you think that would make it feel better and helping him learn like the tools to like self-regulate himself yeah. too versus a parent picks their kid up and is like stop crying and like hugs and squeezes them thinking that will fix it or or yeah. takes the toy away or whatever and tries to solve the problem immediately versus like spending that extra 45 seconds to sit down and go hey i'm noticing you're hurting like what, what's caused that? Why, mm -hmm. what, what's happening that's made you upset? Okay. What, what can we do about it? What do you think we can do to solve it? Right. Yeah. God yeah. forbid I give that advice. Like it's super easy. And then I'll have kids and I'll be like, my brain will be exploding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think those are, those are things yeah. you can even use with your partners. So of course. That are listening. Yeah. Uh, it's exactly what, you know, your partner may want to hear is like, yeah. Noticing what they're feeling or, Mm -hmm. they're, you know, uh, acknowledging whatever emotion it is and, yeah. and listening to them and validating them. Right. So mm -hmm. that's important. Um, the other thing I wanted to discuss with you, considering like the, again, with the dating world and, mm -hmm. the, you know, the current times with online dating and how that's just taken off over the yeah. past several years, how has that changed in terms of the work you do with men? Uh, I know, again, like a lot of my friends kind of struggle in that space because it's frustrating, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there's so many options out there uh, for both men and women. And, and it's just, it, it, what I find is it's hard for people to be able to kind of narrow down on the person they are seeking. Um, mm. And I think, yeah, it's a double-edged sword. So the pro is that we are now able to connect with and be introduced to way more people than they, mm. than we would have previously. Yeah. And the con is as a result of that, we're also going to be seeing more artificial matches, uh, you know, conversations that don't go anywhere or even more time on different dates mm -hmm. uh, that maybe don't lead anywhere. And the other con right now is that I think our society is developing a little bit of a grass is greener mentality. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that is be so you could literally uh, break up with someone today and then be dating someone new by that night. Yeah. And that I think it literally you could be right. Or you could at least be having an intimate conversation with someone that night or ask them to go out for a drink and meet them. And so it's created this like mentality of, I don't need to solve the problem. Um, and if someone is not perfect, I'll just find someone else. Mm -hmm. And that's created like a real nasty, <laughs> a nastiness in the dating culture. Right. Yeah, especially for men that I coach that are a little bit more avoidant. Now, I don't know if you've ever spoken to your audience about, uh, you know, anxious attachment, secure attachment, avoidant attachment. Yeah. 
for those of you that are listening and don't know that you can probably check out either one of our podcasts and le- learn a little bit about that. But um, for men that are a little avoidant that, so men that genuinely do want love and connection, but get freaked out when that starts to feel real, um, can easily, easily just walk away from something because they know that they could find something else the next day. Mm-hmm. Right. And it creates this like self, it's just a bad cycle. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What I, yeah. I think what it, what happens in that case, and I think it, it could apply to women as well that are mm-hmm. avoidant is you don't necessarily take that time to reflect and, and, and I don't want to use the word ownership, but almost not take responsibility for your role and yeah. how you can do different. You basically, yeah. Cause it's like, you keep searching for that perfect person right which doesn't exist and it's like yeah you don't take any ownership for your yourself or you know your flaws and you just keep searching for someone to make your life perfect and that just doesn't exist and so those people are just searching and searching and searching yeah i think then there's the other side of things where there are people that go online and are so truly wanting something genuine but don't know how to position themselves yeah. they're not getting matches and their like confidence is being absolutely shot down yeah. because they get on dating apps and they hear one story about oh I'm matching with so many people and going on all these dates and it's just so easy to meet people and then there are people that go online and they're like whoa like I am not matching and mm-hmm. I feel so crap about myself because like what does this mean is this a reflection yeah. of me yeah. Or do that, I need to have better pictures or. Uh, and probably, like you a, probably do. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and there's a truth to that. I, yeah. you know, I do coach men on how to set their profiles up for success because it yeah. does matter. We're not yeah. presenting ourselves the best way because dating apps are designed to make people judge you on the first go around. So you do mm-hmm. want to give yourself the best chance. Um, and so that's tough for those guys. And so what, what's interesting is that I end up coaching a lot of men yes, around their dating profiles online, but I end up coaching them on how to meet people offline because Mm. guess what? That's a dying art Yeah, and it is a very effective way to meet people. And I end up coaching men on that. And I say, you know, keep going on the online dating world. You don't need to make that your 100% source of finding love. Don't because there are other methods and you don't want to only choose one or the other, right. right? I would say a healthy combination is to be online and to be relatively active there. And then to also know how to be social and meet people that way too, because right. social skills, in my opinion, and I have to look at the research, but I would imagine the social skills of individuals are dropping drastically mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. we're all online. It's all text communication. We don't even have to face someone. So a lot of the dudes that I are coaching are like, so afraid to uh, approach attractive women. Right. And I think those women actually appreciate it when men approach them because it shows confidence and and they're just used to talking to guys behind a screen. So when a guy actually approaches them, they're almost like, I I wouldn't say that they're like, um, I think they're excited at that idea because they're not used to it. Right. And, and Mm -hmm. I think it makes it different. Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, that's, I mean, you know, evolutionary wise, that's how things have happened. <laughs> You're totally bang on. And guys yeah. are like, Oh, I don't want to approach her. She's hot. Like, Oh, she'll be getting that all day long. No, she ain't. Yeah. <laughs> Cause yeah. there are not that many guys that actually walk up and approach her. Mm-hmm. The, they'll, 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 they'll see, like I've heard stories of guys seeing a girl out in public that they think is attractive, not saying a thing to her inquiring about her through other people and then jumping online in the hopes of actually connecting Mm -hmm. with that person to start a conversation that way instead of avoiding all of that malarkey and walking up to the woman and just introducing yourself and so I, i coach guys on how to actually approach women. And I don't give them a page of pickup lines because that's not how we roll. It's like right. how to be honest and authentic and start a connection based on who you really are. And it's really effective. Yeah, hundred percent. I think yeah. it's the fear of rejection that ultimately that of course it know, is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. creates that reluctance. But yeah. um, so is there any like additional tips like you could share on the whole online space? The online uh, space, yeah. yeah. I, I actually, like I, at one point I was going to start a YouTube channel. 
um, to start doing videos on this. And then <laughs> the truth is it's just, there's so much to do yeah. that like YouTube is just, <laughs> unless you're like my whole business is there. I think I did like five or six videos and I was so burnt out from it that I, I stopped, but I did create one video and it's definitely worth watching. And I'll give you the tips here anyways, yeah. but it was how to set your profile up for dating success. And definitely like people are online and they're dating there. So I think it's important to know this one, your, your picture does matter, mm -hmm. right? You don't need to be the hottest dude out there, but you need to have confident photos. And what I mean by that is women want to see your face, right? So make sure you have like a photo where we can look at who you really are. Mm -hmm. And then we want to see photos of the type of person that you are not necessarily. Yeah. We want to see what your body looks like and all that. And do you have hair? And of course women are thinking of these things, mm -hmm. but we don't want five photos of just you. Yeah. <laughs> and we want photos where we can see you. And then we want photos of like, what kind of person are you? So what I mean by that is if you're outdoorsy and you like hiking photo of you out hiking, if you like fishing, you know, be on the, make it clear so we can see you in it. Right. Like don't put a fish covering your face, Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> hold the fish out, cover your face, but like, like show who you are in your right. profile, you, you know, only get that little bit of time to make an impression. So if all you care about is just yourself and there's five selfie photos, most women are going to swipe past you because that's giving the wrong message. Yeah. The right message is, Hey, I'm confident. This is my face. So you can see what I'm like. And I have a great smile. And these other photos are like, me doing fun things, riding a horse out for, a, uh, out for a hike, uh, shooting a gun. If that's your thing, going fishing, um, playing chess, if that's your thing, like, it doesn't yeah. matter what it is. Just give us a glimpse into your life. And I think that's really, um, an appropriate way to, to use the, you know, five or six photos we have to get when we're talking about things like Bumble or Hinge or Tinder. Mm -hmm. And then in your profile, um, please avoid bringing negativity in. So you're going to get swiped past very quickly. If on a profile, you say something along the lines of, I'm just going to make stuff up on the spot here. But if you're like, um, no time for, uh, ghosting or time wasters, only looking for someone serious. It's like, sounds like you've had some bad experiences, dude, not interested. Right. Yeah. Or, um, just broken hearted looking for love. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like guys do that. And they're not necessarily aware and women do it too. Women are awful on there as well. They focus yeah. on all the wrong things. <laughs> like, but right now we're talking about guys and, and so we don't want to bring negativity into the uh, bio. What we want to bring into the bio is, Hey, this is who I am. This is what I love doing. This is what I value. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with saying what you're looking for, but mm -hmm. don't say what you're not looking for. Right. <laughs> Focus yeah. on the positive, not on the negative. So uh, when I was on, before I met my partner, when, when I was on, we met on Tinder. I love telling people that because I just want people to know that there are genuine people out there looking mm -hmm. for love all the time. doesn't matter what the app is or what it's, um, stereotype or negative, you know, images. Yeah. Um, and when I was on there and I was swiping through, um, what, what was I saying? Bring me back to my point about this negative. The right? negative yeah. 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 I, I, as soon as I would see that, um, I mean, I just wouldn't give that person the time of the day, no matter what they looked like. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it's, a, it's a massive, massive no, no. Um, yeah. So definitely, you know, don't talk about what you don't want. Definitely talk about what you do want. Cause that's what that's what's going to attract the right person to you. So yeah. Those are yeah. two tips for sure. Yeah. No, thank you for yeah. sharing that. And I guess overall, in a kind of a general perspective, like for men that are kind of looking for intimate relationships, mm -hmm. um, what are some things you can share outside like the, uh, of the online dating world? I guess, you know, we talked about being vulnerable and, and being able to express uh, your emotions as a man, but what are other things that men can focus on? And one of the things I've tried to highlight in various episodes is really doing the work on yourself um, oh, yeah, before for you're sure. ready for a relationship, right? So yeah. you talked about attachment styles, knowing those so you know exactly how you show up and you can tell that, express that to your partner, but then also understand how they show up. Uh, so stuff like that is yeah. are some of the things I share, but is there anything else? 
Yeah, I, I'll share another tip. And then I'll also say like, uh, what we can do is put maybe in the link of this podcast, uh, a link to a, a, a free uh, ebook that I've created, which are the five common mistakes men are making in dating and how yeah. to overcome them. And in that ebook as well, I just couldn't really think of a very good title for it. It's also like how to build that natural attraction between men and women and polarity. Um, so definitely like get that guy because it will walk you through some mistakes that men are making and how to really overcome them uh, quickly. But one of the tips I have for men that date um, and men that are typically those nice guys too, um, is get clear on what you are looking for, because mm. here's what often happens. We don't really know what we're looking for in a partner. Maybe we know what we're looking for in terms of looks, right? We don't really know what we're looking for. So when someone comes around and there's a little bit of attraction there, we end up just pursuing that and settling there. And then realizing way later on that, oh, we're not actually compatible. Mm -hmm. So get clear on what you actually do want from a relationship. And if you don't know how to get clear on that, then just get support, get coaching from myself or lots of other coaches that are out there so that you know when you found something good. Right. Right. I will share just very quick anecdote story. When I dated before, I had my own insecurities and I remember that as soon as like there was a man that I found attractive and mm -hmm. he liked me back, we would just pursue each other and end up in a relationship. I never actually stopped to consider whether that person was compatible for me, mm -hmm. <laughs> compatible in terms of my life values, compatible in terms of where I'm heading in life, uh, compatible in terms of sexual chemistry, all these types of things. We often worry whether the other person likes us and we yeah. don't stop to ask whether we actually like the other person so mm -hmm. my tip there is to find a way to get clear on what you're really looking for from a, a partner a, a, the woman in your life that's really going to help you to position yourself um, and to basically narrow down how you move forward so yeah, yeah. no thank you for yeah. sharing that and again I appreciate you, you know you coming on and having this conversation with me uh, for people that want to, that don't know you or, or mm -hmm. my audience that want to find you online or social media, what are the best ways to, to get yeah. with you? Um, I, I really like the personal approach. So I, I do talk to people on social media all the time. So you can find me uh, on my account at Kimberly Nina Hill. Um, so you can connect with me there. Feel free to just send me a DM and just say, hey, heard you on the podcast. It's kind of want to like chat and learn a little more. I will, it will be me that speaks with you. So you mm -hmm. can do it that way. You can go directly to my website too, KimberlyNinaHill.com. Same thing, shares a little bit about me, my experience, bunch of testimonials. And if you want to book a call, you can do it that way. Um, and then likewise, if you're not ready to reach out, but you want to learn a little more, we can drop the link to the, uh, the uh, free ebook on how to overcome these mistakes and also how to build that natural attraction. You can learn more there. And then if you feel compelled to reach out after you can do so too. So yeah. perfect. Yeah, no, yeah. I'll definitely share the link to the ebook uh, in the notes there. And yeah, yeah. thank you again. I appreciate You're you welcome. coming on. Yeah. Yeah. It was really, I really enjoyed it. Thanks again. And, and hope to have you on mine soon too. So, well, that's the end of the episode. Thank you again for tuning in as always, please leave a five-star review and until next week.